out uh, to explain me again uh, the IS and LM curve. So quickly, I'll just revise before starting with the next unit. I hope the slide is visible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, somebody asked me, I hope they are listening to me. Uh, they asked me to explain about the ISLM curve. Okay, ma'am, here IS stands for investment and savings. Okay. So where investments it will be equal to savings. And then LM stands for liquidity preference and money supply. So here on the graph, you can easily understand. See, always the investment savings will be a downward sloping. For example, if the interest rate is at this point, okay, so it will be at the average level. Yeah, whatever the quantity of money you demand and supply, it will be at the average level. But as if there will be a change in the interest price, so if the interest is increasing from I to I1, okay, you can see here the IS curve will be the demand. This is 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 nothing but the demand. So whenever if the interest price uh, prices increases, okay our investments will go down because the cost of production from the point of view of producers will be increasing here but at the same time lm curve will be on the upward side so this will be from the perspective of the producers this is lm curve okay see whenever this is from the perspective view of customers you have to think same way how we discussed with the demand and supply curve. So basically you just think that this is a demand curve and this is the supply because here we are measuring quantity demanded and quantity supplied of money. So whenever there is a lower interest rate, the demand for money will increase. You can see there is a long gap here. The demand for money will be more. But whenever the interest rate increases from I to I1, there is a small gap here. Okay, so the demand decreases. Then, but from the point of view of the, that is financial institutions, who will be supplying money in the economy, financial institutions, banks and all. So whenever the interest rate increases, their supply will be more. You can see the gap here, the supply will be more. But whenever the interest rate decreases, the supply will be very less. Okay, that is how this ISLM curve is being explained for to understand what is the equilibrium state. Okay, so whenever you find this, this is called as excess of supply. Okay, you can see there will be a huge supply of money in the market. This is shortage of money in the economy. Okay, because supply will be very less. You can see the supply is reduced here. So this is the situation of shortage of money supply in the market. This is the situation of excess of money supply in the market. Okay. One more clarity I have to give you about uh, that question. Okay. But sir, eco is coming. Some eco is coming. Uh, sorry, sir. Some eco is coming. Is my voice? Your voice is breaking, ma'am. Okay. Not clear. Yeah. Is my voice clear? Yes, ma'am. Now it's clear. Okay. So there was one confusion uh, related to recession. Okay. I'll just clarify. The, the question was here in the multiple choice question. Okay. The cyclical fluctuations are, uh, no, not cyclical fluctuations, the crisis, right? Yeah, there was a confusion related to, is the slide changed? Can you see the question here, crisis period? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so 
so there was a confusion about this uh, the, the period which is known as crisis period so here people had the doubt between the recession period and the depression period okay see i'll uh, the recession is something uh, why we call it as the answer is recession okay why we call this as a crisis period is first we have to know what is crisis okay see the crisis is the situation which arises which give rise to yeah i'll mention here any uh, when do we call a particular period as crisis period when the situation arises which give rise to any danger that is has to be happened okay so now the danger itself will arises from recession itself all the economic activities will start reducing production reduces profit reduces investment level reduces so all these things start reducing from recession itself that is why we call recession period as a crisis period okay yeah i hope i made it clear only 94 have joined biju sir can i start with a new topic now Uh, yes madam we can start okay sir done okay now we are moving ahead with the next unit is sixth unit i told you people to study on your own then i thought okay uh, let me read out in the uh, class and give you a little more clarity on that so that will be helpful for you to uh, revise later madam madam there okay? is madam there is one uh, question yes sir ma'am uh, in the very first chapter there was an mcq that the relationship between end and scarce means yes so what is the answer of that question ma'am unlimited and limited ends are unlimited sir ends are nothing but our wants okay human wants human okay. wants sir unlimited sir there is no limit but the resources the scarce is the resources which are available in limit Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Okay. So here, uh, I'll just uh, brief you out on chapter six and chapter seven. Okay, then we'll go ahead to chapter eight. Okay, so it will be helpful for you for preparation. See, I told you chapter six is completely theory. Where if you read, you can easily understand. See, this is all about the Indian economy, the status of Indian economy, uh, how how it was till two thousand eight. Then we will be learning about how the economy developed after two thousand eight. okay see till independence uh, the gdp per capita income and the gdp was actually stagnant there was no um, very few frequent fluctuations or there was no uh, frequent changes in the gdp okay so till independence our per capita income and the gdp was actually stagnant there was no such uh, movement to the fluctuations but after that there was a growth in gdp uh, that was actually 0.9% okay and then population was a uh, population growth was actually 0.8% it was not even 1% okay so later but there was a huge development that is be that was been seen after independence okay from you can see uh, between this three decades of 1950 to 1980 the gdp was increased to 3.5% where later again it was increased to 6% till the year 1982 81 okay then again gdp growth rate was accelerated uh, after 2000 uh, after uh, yeah after 80 81 okay there was a huge increment that was been seen in the gdp that was 7.2% during this period of 2001 to 2008 okay why i am considering 2008 here you can easily remember this till 2008 because 2008 india faced 
the heavy inflation in the economy okay so everybody knows about that uh, inflation of during 2008 okay a lot of prices increased just lot of people were unemployed during that time it was very difficult for the government to have a control over the inflation to bring back the uh, positive economy into place so there was lot of problem okay so but uh, before the 2008 crisis gdp was 7.2% okay and it was experienced or uh, researched and observed that 95% uh, in the economic activities the investment was been made by domestic savings okay this was economy before uh, till 2008 okay heavy investments was only domestic savings because industrial revolution was actually at the lower place okay so till 2008 it was like heavy investment like up to 95% of the investments were been financed by the domestic savings okay the savers who were been uh, um, having the savings after uh, paying all taxes and all like uh, they were been having the disposable income right so out of that if they were been savings a certain amount of money then uh, that savings was been utilized for the economic activities okay you have to remember all this then we'll go to economy after 2008 when is the period till 2008 then we have a period after 2008 okay so even this is also mentioned like uh, rate of inflation was 15% during independence but later it was reduced to 5% till 2008 now we'll talk about how was the economy after 2008 okay so you all know there was a huge financial crisis during 2008 kindly remember the year that's enough someone has uh, on the video so can you stop the video and it will be seen uh venu yadav sir can you please switch off your video okay thank you okay so economy after 2008 so you know 2008 was a very difficult uh, situation for the indian economy due to the crisis that was faced by the other countries okay so then gdp was also came down uh it was actually been expected from 2008 to 9 to increase to 9% but it was reduced okay you can see it was reduced to 6.8% and further from 2011 to 12 it has been decreased to 6.5% again you can see there was a dip in uh, gdp rate 5.1% in 2012 and 13 not only this during pandemic also uh, you can uh, have an idea you can just check what was our gdp it was below 2% okay so like that during the situations in the economy there will be huge reflection on the gdp okay even inflation will be more but later when when the economy started growing that is from 2012 13 when the gdp started growing then the inflation rate was also becoming coming down okay so that was the situation in the economy after 2008 Do then we have to remember all these figures yes ma'am do we have to remember all these figures no no not particular figures ma'am it is like it's not constant it keeps changing no one can remember all those uh, uh, this one but you have to remember the particular things like uh, 2008 was the inflation uh, during that time gdp was low even uh, inflation rate was high like that you have to remember they may give you a multiple choice on that okay. but not on the exact figures ma'am okay okay fine thank you ma'am okay Okay, so But now what, what you people have to remember? Yes. What sir. is the la latest GDP rate, madam? No. Sorry, sir. Now it is uh, growing, uh, sir. Like uh, I think it is uh, four, four point five or four, sir. I I'll let you know exactly, sir. Okay. Okay. So you have to uh, remember there are various sectors of economy. When we talk about GDP, all these sectors will contribute towards the development of GDP. 
okay so here agriculture and allied activities so this is our primary sector most of the people are employed here okay our secondary sector is industry sector tertiary sector is services and we have msmes okay so here uh, first we'll discuss one by one okay so you all know right what is agricultural and allied activities where the farmers are involved all the agricultural uh, then the uh, the uh, people who are involved in the agriculture forestry fishing all these related activities when when the person is involved in the production on fields we call that income as a agriculture and allied activities okay industries is we know manufacturing will take place and then uh, in the manufacturing they will be utilizing all kinds of power generation activities and all and then services we know uh, tourism we have then uh, we have hotel industry then lot more banking industry insurance industry all these are included in the services i'll read out the important points to be remembered under this okay see agricultural and allied activities we know uh, that yeah so it includes agriculture that is uh, proper agriculture that is people farmers involved in it or livestock if you are having the uh, buffaloes bulls and all uh, like uh, mostly buffaloes ox uh, will be uh, having okay so for uh, growing the crops and uh, yielding on the field then forestry logging fishing and all other related activities which you are been involved in the production on the field okay so you can see this this sector accounted for 17% of gdp during 2008 and 9 even you know during the pandemic when our gdp was decreasing from 5.5% our gdp was 5.5% in 2019 okay Uh, then it was been expected that it was reached actually till eight eight percent during two thousand fourteen. Okay, so approximately till two thousand fourteen, our GDP was eight percent. But uh, then it started uh, uh, reducing slowly. But yeah, uh, in the year two thousand twenty to twenty one, okay. Uh, our gdp was reduced up to i told you it was reduced till 2 to 2.5% approximately and how this 2% was maintained just because of the agricultural produce okay can somebody tell me how during the pandemic this agriculture maintained our gdp was the industry there during pandemic was the because of the banking industry during pandemic sorry sir no i'm talking about agricultural alone contributed the uh, highest percentage during pandemic in gdp our because gdp was, was because, actually yeah. yes sir because uh, by agriculture activities we were also exporting our agriculture to other countries uh, other countries sir uh, i think you didn't get sir, my question i was asking system. during pandemic time everything Ma'am, was it was only the industry which was not stopped during pandemic Yes, industry, industry. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, somebody is answering. The agri industry was the only industry that was not stopped during pandemic. Yes, exactly, sir. All other like ter uh, secondary sector, like all industries stopped working. All the services were stopped working. People were scared enough to buy something outside and eat. Okay, so much fear we people had, but we didn't stop having the agricultural products. Correct? We were being dependent only on the agricultural things. Uh, all the fruits, vegetables, everything we were being consuming. The only industry. was and was agricultural okay so that is why it was the only thing that was been helping our gdp to be in the at least upper level okay so uh, yeah coming back to this uh, this sector accounts 49% of the employment in the economy okay and you can see 10% of the india's exports consist of agricultural commodities so we are good in uh, 10 per, we are good in exporting agricultural products okay then there was a crisis of food shortage the food sh shortage actually started which gave the introduction to the green revolution 
okay you know who started green revolution green revolution was started by a person called swami nathan okay so he started this green revolution in the year 1960s what is green revolution here the green revolution is nothing but when you actually uh, produce a crop when you develop producing the crop with the use of artificial fed fertilizers okay earlier people used to depend only on the natural or organic things for producing uh, uh, crops and all but in during this 1960s there was a food shortage it was whatever was produced by the farmers was not been able to serve all the people in the economy that is why green revolution came into existence where people started of using artificial pesticides fertilizers all kinds of introduction of the chemicals took place in the green revolution okay so that you can save the crops okay if you use this uh, pesticides fertilizers you can kill the worms and all that uh, will be eating off the grains and all so you can uh, you can just uh, have the control over your yields and it will be it will not be taken away or it will not be eaten by the uh, unnecessary worms and all okay so like that you have been saving the yield whatever been be producing on the ground that yeah use of all the introduction of the technology like artificial pesticides and fertilizers during 1960s okay so then um, this was about the agricultural industry and then now uh, we have another industry which was giving rise to the gdp here that is industrial sector okay so here uh, industrial sector alone uh, constitute 30% of the india's gva gva is nothing but gross value addition okay so the total value of uh, the goods is being produced in the economy and uh, the increase of the income of the people so it alone constitute 33% it employs 22% okay hope you remember in the agriculture it were been up uh employing 49% of the people are employed in the agricultural field in the industry you can see 22% of the whole population is being employed okay see according to this uh, industrial sector the ceo c sorry cso that is central statistics office cso stands for central statistics office okay so this authority has been classified industrial sector into uh, three segments one is mining and quarrying another one is manufacturing and electricity and next one is gas and water supply okay mining and quarrying we know that mining is digging okay so they actually do mining for petroleum or they do mining for gold like how we have kgf and all quarrying is also something like a uh, process of removing the rock sand and other all uh, minerals and use them for producing materials for constructions okay tiles and all all these the Uh, precious stones and all okay that process we call it as quarrying so mining and quarrying is one se segment manufacturing and electricity is another segment okay and the gas and water supply so all these are the industrial sector that is contributing huge for the economy okay then we have services sector this is the very important sector nowadays okay you and me are from the service sector you are also from the banking service sector i am also from the education industry that is service sector so we alone service sector has been increased okay earlier agriculture was the highest then the second was the industrial and the third one we were considering this as a tertiary sector the third sector to uh, develop the economy but now you can see it is increased than the agriculture as well as the industry okay so it's alone contributes 50 more than half 52% the two primary and the secondary are been concentrating only for the 48% but service sector alone is contributing for the gva for 52% okay from when this mm, service sector GBA? started sorry gross value added what is gva gross value addition i'll mention here gross which will help in the calculation of the gdp 
gross value addition that is how much it has been uh, how much it has been contributing towards the gdp gross value addition okay so it started growing from uh, 1990s okay now you can consider uh, you may get the question on which is the leading sector of the economy now the leading sector of the economy is service sector okay what all comes under service sector it it es it you know information technology it es information technology enabled services okay like bpos call centers and all no those comes here under it es okay then telecom banking insurance real estate civil aviation all these are part of service sector and that gives the phenomenal growth for the economy i hope i made it clear yes yes the next one is msmes uh, who which has been contributing enough for the economy uh, is msmes you can see so many schemes are also coming for uh, msmes msmes stands for micro small and medium enterprises you know even if you uh, according to uh, the scheme which has been bought by our current uh, prime minister okay uh, like prime minister um, jandhan yojana and all and from the banks if you want to start up any msme now uh, you will be getting loans and advances okay so you it it's like you need not have to make the payment for 5 years after 5 years you have to start making the payment for the uh, that yojana you are been entering to for msmes but there is a requirement of fulfilling the uh, certain uh, provisions like you had to have the gst number you have to have the registered place you have to submit your uh, proper plan of starting up of the msmes how many people you will be employing it all that details if you submit then you and me are also eligible for starting up of the msmes with the help of government grants okay so actually this uh, msmes also contributes towards the gdp of the country you can see uh, during 2006 to 7 it was 35% that it was contributing then it increased to 37.5% during 2012 13 okay as it has been increasing uh you can see here contribution to gdp alone from msc msme is 6.11% okay so it uh, msmes our msmes is actually the strength for the larger industries if you don't have msmes this this large organizations are nothing if the large organizations are producing the products like car and all the parts which is been given uh, will be from the msmes okay so it only con it's uh, one self will contribute for 45% of the overall exports from the country that is what uh, uh, prime minister bought one concept like we have to increase our made in india i hope you all uh, heard about this so why this concept came into an existence made in india the only reason for is our exports are less and imports are more we are importing more from other countries and exporting less that is why the concept of made in india brought into existence that is our exports should increase and our uh, imports should decrease so who contributes for this exports to uh, yeah exports to increase that is msmes can contribute more that is why so many schemes comes so many loans and advances will be given for the uh, people okay so this is about the sixth unit uh, any doubt no okay see here uh, uh how it has been defined like uh, which one you can call it as uh, i told you um we have micro msme stands for micro small and medium right when do you call the from the from classification is made from two perspective one is manufacturing perspective and another one is service perspective whenever your investment uh, for starting up of any industry is less than 1 crore you can call that as in a micro industry if your investment is less than 10 crores you can call it as uh, that is from 1 crore to more than 1 crore to less than 10 crores then you can call that as small industry 
okay and from more than 10 crores but less than 50 crores is your investment then we call it as medium scale industry this is in re with regard to manufacturing industry in the same case if yours is a service industry you are starting msme it will check on the turnover okay so if your turnover is less than 5 crores then we call it as micro service industry if it is more than 5 crores less than 50 crores we call that as small scale industry then if it is more than 50 crores but less than 250 crores we call that as medium okay to decide whether the industry is the micro small or medium we have divided classified it into two types of industries manufacturing and services for manufacturing we judge on the basis of investment for service industry we judge on the basis of turnover okay who gave these rules we have msme d act 2006 that is micro small Medium Enterprises Development Act 2006. Okay. See, you can see that I have given the current GDP of India, like the contribution by the each sector. Uh, there is no uh, data which has been released for the year 21 22 yet. So we have the data from 2021. So I have taken in this slide. Suppose Till you write the exam, if I get the data of 21-22, I'll share it in the group. Okay. So, agriculture contributes 20.19%. Service industry contributes 53.89%. And industry contributes 25.92%. You can see now which is the highest contributor of the GDP. That is service sector. Okay. More than the... Uh, like people started giving more uh, concern for the service industry, then the service industry is growing at the very higher rate. It alone contributes for 53.89% to the GDP. Okay. I have few MCQs. So I want you people to answer, then we'll move ahead. In which year India launched targeted public distribution system? I hope you know what is public distribution system. See, it's a it's a place to distribute all the uh, food food eatable. So in which year? Answer is nineteen eighty. Which of the following sector uses largest fraction of commercial energy in India? Industry. 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 The National Food Grain Movement Plan is primarily related to development of new seed varieties of food grains, opening food grain seeds villages, modernization of All of the above. All of the above. D. Which I sector has seen double digit growth in India in the last decade? Which are the services? Services. 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 services? services. How much FDI is allowed in the food processing industry? 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100 then Mudra stands for? Micro units development. Micro units 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 development. Agency. 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 Developing the MSC. Right. Father of Green Revolution is Swami Nathan. MS Swami Nathan. Yes, MS Swami Nathan. Okay. So this I see. I just that's why I told you this is like a self uh, explanation was required. But I hope I made it clear. It was helpful for you people. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 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 okay. Yes. The same way I'll discuss about the chapter seven also. Okay, so that uh, you people will not feel like burden when idea. Okay, see, chapter seven is uh, completely about the economic reforms. Anybody can tell me what is economic reforms? Why do we require? 
you know we'll say there was a huge economic reforms that happened in 1991 in the we have bought the lpg concept madam voice is breaking realization privatization no voice is not coming is it audible now yes ma'am yes ma'am if i can if i mute and unmute then it will be fine okay so i was telling you about uh, hope you remember in the 1991 uh, our indian economy has gone through a major economic reform that is lpg liberal people gave importance for liberalization okay most of the tariffs were cut down on the imports and export i'll just uh, Yes, there was a huge tariff that was being cut down in the liberalization. Then privatization. Private individuals were also given for uh, starting up of their industry. Okay. Then globalization. People were given chance to start up their industries in India. Indian people were given the chance to start up their industries in other country. So many uh, subsidies were started provided by the government. So that was a huge economic reform that took place during 1991 in India. Okay. So uh, can you tell me what is economic reforms now? progress ma'am progress in economy yeah progress in economy okay sir then changes in economy yes exactly any changes that you bring in the economy for deregulating the economy suppose if any some problems has been there or any uh, deficit has been there like how i told you green revolution why did they bought the green revolution what is the reason for bringing green shortage revolution shortage of food ma'am that is food shortage was there that is why they bought the green revolution that is what we call it as economic reforms so when you bring something for the when you bring some change in the economy for uh, deregulating it to solve the economic problems that we call it as economic reforms okay see so this economic reforms can happen uh, through the various sectors okay starting with the first one is real sector real sector is nothing but the industrial sector which is been involved in the actual production of goods and services so if you bring in the changes to the actual production like out uh, i told you uh, what happened here food shortage was been there okay that is why green revolution was introduced in the agriculture sector but here when suppose the quantity demanded by the people is more and the supply from the industry is less because industries uh, industrial revolution was not much during 1991 okay that was only the starting period of economic reform so this sector the industrial sector basically came forward they brought some changes in the actual production they increased they gave the importance of, for the people to start up more industry that is what it's happening in the msmes also now the demands are being more <laughs> like government is giving uh, to increase the employment to increase the production in the economy government is giving so many grants for the people to start up msmes okay that that can lead to increase in the actual production of goods and services because msmes are the backbones for the large scale industries if msmes are growing obviously the large scale industries will grow that is why how, this is how the real sector is contributing okay then we have then we have financial sector okay see how this financial sector is bringing the changes in the economic reforms how they are bringing we have three committees i would like to draw your attention kindly remember this committees you may be getting the questions on this okay see they they actually formed one form the committees to give the recommendations in the year 1992 and who's head who headed this narasimhan i hope you remember who was this person narasimha during 1992 yeah p b p b narasimha rao exactly who was he sir rbi governor prime minister prime minister exactly prime minister yes 
he was actually he had to give the report okay on Why recommendations of how to bring the reforms in the uh, my voice is breaking no my voice is breaking yes okay. ma'am yes ma'am now clear yes ma'am is it clear yes, okay so i was telling you the, the he has he with the committee members is not alone he headed the committee along with the uh, team members he submitted a report in the year 1992 okay and in that he gave the recommendation how you can further strengthen the financial institution of india you have to increase the uh, structure the nature of the banks lending okay then reduction in the slr and crr okay this we will discuss in the next unit so you all know better uh, than me that what is slr and crr so if you are reducing the rate of slr that is uh, how much the commercial banks has to maintain as reserves uh with the rbi and with their own individual banks so then if you are cutting down that means you are bringing more uh, amount of money in the economy okay then uh, re removal of dual control there will be a central government control also and there will be a even state government control also vat was also there i hope you know before gst vat was also been there even the other taxes with customs duty and all will be there from the uh, central government so if you are been working on all these the recommendations was made by narasimhan uh, committee that then our economy could uh, then there can be a economic reforms okay then after submitting this report again it was revised the report was revised and it was submitted with the same committee they submitted another report in the year 1998 so they came up with strengthening banks in india they gave the suggestions if you want the economic reforms to be uh, stable in india strengthen the banks banks that means there should be a proper support from rbi to all other commercial banks to develop okay there should be a uh, proper funds to be supplied in the time of the shortfall for the banks okay and the bank ownership even the private individuals can be given the chance to we have more private banks right from the we have uh, banks of foreign countries also started up in india so that is because of the committee report okay then uh, preview of banking laws there was a banking act i hope uh, you know which year the banking act introduced 1949 banking regulation act which we follow 1949 Yes, 1949. Yes. Correct. Okay. So this act we uh, just take 1949 or 59. 49. 49. 49. 49. 49. 49. Okay. So this he this committee uh, gave the suggestion that there should be a review. whatever the regulations was given in this act that we follow okay so that has to be reviewed and if any changes has to be made that should be made in this accordingly okay then came sh khan report this is another committee which was been formed okay they gave the suggestion on the economic reform is through universal banking even our banks you can find in other countries also we can find sbi in other countries we have different our indian banks have the uh, branches in the different countries okay so this uh, this H S Khan and committee report gave the suggestion there should be when you have to bring the universal banking, give the permission for the other countries also to start up the banks in our country and our country people should also be given the chance to start up the banks in other countries. Okay, so this is this you can remember in the financial sector three reports you can remember. First two reports is by the same committee, one in the year nineteen ninety two, other one in the year. Again, it is New breaking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have muted, sir. Okay, the next market is money market. You know, if the changes in money market can also bring the huge change in the economy. Okay, suppose if there is a high demand for the Indian stock stock market, if the stock market is doing really good. 
then there can be a lot of improvement in our economy but once there is a crash in the stock market then our economy faces the huge huge inflation okay there will be a huge depression can be created in the economy if our money market is not been in the proper position okay so when you are dealing with the financial instruments in the money market you have to check with the high liquidity okay this is the market where the money supply will be there right money market so it can be in the liquid or it can be in the securities so who will be uh, responsible for deciding upon on the all these decisions we have cblo uh, authority cblo stands for collateralized borrowing and lending operation obligation okay who will give all the provisions for the money market to deal with how much of the money can be borrowed as a collateral securities okay you, you have to keep something as a mortgage right for getting this you have to collateralize and what are what should be the lending obligations all these uh, details is been given by cblo okay that stands for collateralized borrowing and lending obligation then we have and even other applications are also given this all you people know cp stands for commercial paper cd is certificate of deposits irs is interest rate swaps and uh, fra is forward rate agreements okay all these securities are uh, dealt with the money market yes what everyone Yes, I did. Okay, then we have government securities market. This is another market where the government will be issuing the securities. Okay, so here they actually gave importance for G Sec. Okay, see whenever we talk about government securities, who will be in the first place to invest in the government securities? Can you people answer me? Bank. Who will Bank. be in the Bank. 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 Exactly. Who will be given the first preference? Commercial, Commercial bank, bank, right? Okay. That is why they bought this concept as G Sec. That is government securities concept. They bought into an existence. That means where even the retail investors, the people like me, individual investors, we can invest directly in the G securities. but the only thing is they have to open their rdg account okay they have to open rdg account like how uh, if we have to invest in the securities we have to in uh, open dmat account right hope you all know in dmat account only we can have the dealings of the shares the same way when the this uh, when government securities market they give they started giving the chance for the retail investors to invest in the g sec that is government securities but they can invest only with the help of rdg account rdg stands for retail direct gilt account i'll mention here retail direct gilt account so this account they have to open so whenever they have to have the access to the governmental securities after giving the preference to the commercial banks so then it will be open for the retail investors as well okay then we have foreign exchange market what help this market can do for us foreign by uh, foreign exchange market we can um, exactly. we can have foreign buy exchange sell and we can uh, yes buy and sell the foreign securities Imported okay foreign so all that happens foreign country can we, invest in yeah we can exchange even the currencies yes uh, can you repeat sir foreign uh, countries can invest in our market yes that is fdi okay fdi fis will be helpful for our country then capital market so in capital market we can have the money market is where we will be having the short term securities dealing uh, like a liquidity but here capital market will be having the dealings with the bonds stocks that is uh, this is also called as the secondary market where uh, for the very first time you are not dealing with the financial securities but you will be dealing with the secondary securities okay 
sorry see here i'll give you an exact difference of money market and the capital market okay see money market you will be buying and selling the securities for the very first time but capital market is a market where you will be buying and selling the securities for the from not the original owner you will be purchasing from the see if the person who has already purchased the uh, securities in the money market will if, if the person is not able to hold that or if they want to uh, convert it to a cash then they can come to capital market okay that is they can find the other people who are really interested in the investment so they can sell their securities to the people in the capital market when this dealing for the secondary securities is happening that that is we call it as capital market for the very first time if you are investing in some securities uh, directly from the company we call it as money market okay then credit market so here uh, credit market is a market place for exchange of debt securities and short term commercial papers okay like treasury bills uh, then we will be having commercial papers all that is uh, comes at the credit market where you have been uh, uh, looking forward for the credit okay so uh, what is debt securities uh you are not the owner of the company you are just lending money to the company if you purchase suppose if you have subscribed for 100 debentures in the company okay uh, can somebody tell me the difference between having 100 debentures and 100 shares suppose in the a company we, we become the shareholder and exactly. uh, equity holder and when we purchase debenture uh, we are the debtors for the uh, company exactly sir company is the debtor for you sir Company should pay you, right? Dividend the issue. Yeah. See, sir, if suppose you are investing in a company A, if you are taking 100 shares, you will become the owner. Equity shares, if you are holding, you will become the owner of the company. You will become the shareholder of the company. But here, when you are uh, even subscribing for 100 dimensions equal to this, then you will become the lender of money to the company. You can even redeem these debentures. Shares, I told you, shares, you have to uh, sell it to somebody else. Okay, you can't redeem it from the company. But debentures, if you don't want, you can just go to company, you can redeem your debentures, they will pay you. Okay, so this is the difference of uh, this one and that happens in the credit market. Okay, then payment system. This is also one of the reforms happened. Payment system. We have so many payment systems now, right? We have ch check truncation system. You all know better than me. Uh, bankers, electronic clearing system, speed clearing, NEFT, uh, RTGS has been happening. So all these are the reforms in the Indian economy that is taken place. And nowadays it's all like UPI apps. Okay, with the help of UPI apps, we can easily transfer the funds from one place to another, for, from one person to another. Trade liberalization also took place. There was no restriction for the people also to move from here and there for trade. If I am from Bangalore, I can easily go to Chennai and I can sell my products. Okay, so that liberalization is being given for the people for uh, speedy movement from one place to another place. Then uh, somebody was talking about, sir was talking about foreign direct investment. It was not, neither there in the India before 1991. Okay, and even during the uh, Congress government, there, there were so many restrictions for foreign direct investment, but this government, uh, this current government gave the more permission for uh, various industries to start up their other countries' industries to start up in the in our country. Okay, then portfolio investment, uh, like people starting, were been investing only. Uh, they were been ready to keep only in the banks and all. But now what is portfolio investment? Like investing in the stock. So this is also one of the reform in Indian economy. Okay. And external commercial borrowings is also there. We have a help from uh, IMF. We, we can have the help from World Bank. Okay. So that is also economic reforms. So all these are the economic reforms that took place. Yes, ma'am. So what is the difference between foreign direct investment and portfolio investment, ma'am? Ma'am, foreign direct investment is uh, 
for other country people they will be investing in they will be starting up of the industry or they can have the for example uh, you know how uh, you know how you have been experienced all the malls are been uh, uh, started declining their sales started declining have you experienced ma'am there are so many malls where only still cinemas are running only um, one or two shops are running in one mall have you experienced ma'am ah oh, ma'am yes ma'am okay why can you Online. see there are so many supermarkets that is coming up you know ma'am. lulu mall the best example ah oh, ma'am how it is running is it indian who started this no no okay a foreign return who started this lulu mall okay lulu. how is the what is the strategy he first started the gaming session if you are taking your children for the gaming section okay all eatables are also there different brand shops are also there lulu market is also been there hypermarket correct so this is the strategy that was predicted like if the other country people they bring the idea from the other countries okay is it not affecting our economy is it not affecting our own people the indian who started malls are they not got affected ma'am yes ma'am that is fdi if you are giving the chance for other country people to have the business interest okay they can have 50% or more than 50% they can have the <coughs> they can hold the shares okay just a minute yeah sorry for the inconvenience okay so that is why here fdi is nothing but when you are allowing some other country people to have the business interest in our country that is fdi portfolio investment is if you are investing in shares stocks bonds public deposits that is your portfolio portfolio is nothing but your assets your investments is that clear ma'am our, our investments in our country ma'am Oh, yeah, yeah. yes no no it can be our country investment also other uh, other country investment so but here you are dealing with the different kinds of stocks but here foreign direct investment is basically in the business interest you want to have the uh, more voting power that is fdi okay. that means portfolio investment uh, can be done both by uh, indian india or other country also yes sir yes sir but this is uh, should be from foreigners okay okay then uh, so this is also have given what are the important reforms what had happened uh, fdi liberalization then sharing of tax with state government so here uh, earlier there was a uh, even few taxes were been uh, were been imposed by state government vat vat was there earlier then central government were also imposing certain taxes but now it is gst you can see after so much of liberalization even the gst act came into an existence so if you read you can easily understand this and then social issues there are so many social issues uh, still prevailing in our country like uh, even after uh, having observing so many reforms you can see this is still prevailing are we free from poverty are we free from poverty can you say that no, poverty no, is below no, no ma'am below no. poverty line right? yeah no, no one it is not health industry do you, uh, what happened in the second wave why so so many second wave of corona virus how many people we lost we lost our loved ones why what was the problem Uh, can somebody tell me hospital not in uh, their hospital is very less exactly i i myself have not, yeah like beds were not available oxygen was not available uh, i hope you all have seen how people were taking oxygen outside the health centers and all education industry is it developed what is the status of the government industry government uh, educational institutions still agriculture investment labor reforms are the are everybody are getting equal here laborers no 
okay all these are the even demographic dividend that every uh, area okay every region every region is not rich here okay one region is very good okay you can see uh, suppose if we take example of karnataka okay and if you start comparing with the uh, northeast states is it same way they are developing if you given an option yeah. so people are from mumbai no okay? no uh you people are from mumbai if you are given an option to work in bangalore in karnataka and northeastern states which one will you select bangalore bangalore living standard of living here so there is still that is and social issues all the regions are not and financial inclusion okay financial any idea what is financial inclusion providing banking service to the grassroots level of the society yes exactly. very good any other uh, answer for financial inclusion bringing everyone uh, under a uh, banking uh, umbrella madam <coughs> everyone exactly. in the country so you are understanding from the banking perspective financial inclusion still the equal opportunities are not there see unless and until uh you uh, what was the situation uh, before 2000 uh, uh 16 do everyone had the bank account do everyone had the bank account no no when no. everybody had started yes, having the bank account and then account when open sorry when the account when open then everybody has account exactly uh, zero bank uh, zero account ba zero account was there no that uh, came into an existence that current government will be depositing some amount to your zero balance account so everybody should have one bank account government came up with this scheme that is why everybody started then the government came up with new scheme upis now even if you purchase on 5 rupees thing in any shop okay even the uh, vegetable vendor on the uh, streets they will also be having the codes of upi so you can easily make the payment for them they they also will have the bank account so each and every one are coming under that umbrella as you said that is financial inclusion okay so these are the social issues i hope i made it clear the chapter 6 and 7 yes ma'am yes ma'am so now if you read also you, it will be easy for you to understand now we are moving ahead the eight uh, chapter that is monetary policy and fiscal madam voice is breaking not audible madam is it audible now yes madam so now we'll start with the eighth chapter that is monetary policy and fiscal policy can somebody tell me what is monetary policy what do you know about the monetary policy the monetary policy is issued uh, by the um, central bank of uh, any country rbi rbi in india it is rbi for for supply of so, money yes monetary policy concentrates on see here the first preference we have uh, four essentials of any economy okay so i'll just mention here essentials of any economy what is the essentials of any economy first one is regulation of money supply correct they should have the regulation on money supply so that there should not be excess money supply and there should not be deficit money supply there should be stability in the stability of price level if the price increases what happens inflation will start so there should be a stability maintained in the price levels immediately when they uh, get this danger of increasing in the price of the commodities they should come with the some steps so that they can have the stability okay then we have third is third the economy is economic growth they should constantly look on the economic growth and development 
and then making it employable. That is creating new employment opportunities. That is what our government is doing, right? Uh, that uh, starting giving loans for MSME so that people can be. Become the entrepreneurs. They can give more. If one MSME starts, then four to five people will automatically get involved. Then our unemployment problem will be solved. Okay, so that is that is why Made Made in India came. Then MSMEs program schemes, okay, Jan Dhan Yojana schemes and all have come. Okay, so all these are uh, to regulate the um, uh, economy with the help of employability. Okay, so you can see here this first two is related to. Monetary. monetary policy will take care of regulation of money supply and then stability of price level the another two the first priority of monetary policy is these two then second priority will be given for economic growth and employability but when it comes to the case of fiscal policy this will be given the first preference employ economic growth and employability and then stability of is level and the regulation of money supply will be given the second preference <coughs> okay so as you said i asked for you the difference between money monetary policy is authorized by i mean now uh, it has been framed by rbi okay and then the uh, fiscal policy is Uh, completely exclusively by the government okay and whatever the uh, decisions will be taken in monetary policy it is for the short run for the particular specific period of time but fiscal policy whatever the decision is being taken it will take long time to be implemented you know when they started having the idea of gdp uh, sorry gst they actually claimed this gst policy when our congress government was been there okay then later when the modi government came into existence they implemented okay so that is how any decision you take for the changes in the economy in the fiscal policy it will take a lot of time you uh, you know kisans were also protesting right we had some uh, kisan bill okay which they did not allow Limit. So that is like, still pending. Like that, various changes. So they want to make certain changes. Why is this breaking, ma'am? Why is this breaking? We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. So I was telling you about fiscal policy. Government, if uh, wants to bring any changes in the economy, it is not so easy. uh it will take lot of time so we have already experienced so many protest was been going on by the kisans of punjab and all okay uh that is how it happens like whatever the government wants to make the changes it's not very simple it will take some time that is fiscal policy to start the monetary policy okay you have to understand it is the tool the central bank uses to control the money supply in the economy okay so we'll uh, move to a uh, tools of the monetary supply monetary policy can somebody tell me what are the tools of monetary policy exactly so you people are well versed this with this concept because of your bankers see broadly i just bought this in the chart so that it is helpful for you to remember we have two tools of monetary policy we have quantitative tools of monetary policy and we have qualitative tools of monetary policy okay so here see in the this is also this is also called as general measures of monetary policy okay we call this as general as well okay so here see quantitative basically decides on the size of money supply that how much the money had to be uh, supplied and how much it has to be reduced qualitative is completely depend on uh, it's like uh, providing orders request from the rbi so that they can have the control over again on the money supply this is like uh, having the barrier on the use of money this is size of money how much the money has to be in injected in the economy or withdrawal from the economy but here it is like use of money okay where they can be used that is more qualitative here you can get everything in the uh, 
numbers okay numerically you can have the uh, quantitative figures but here qualitative is just the use it's not any thing you can't present it in the numerical forms that is qualitative okay as you all know uh, there are different uh, quantitative measures we have first reserve ratio then open market operation and then we we'll have policy rate okay so in reserve ratio we have crr we have slr okay open market operations then policy rate we have bank rate we have repo rate we have refer reverse repo rate sorry it should be repo rate okay reverse repo rate and marginal facility okay that is marginal standing facility msf and qualitative so now we'll discuss one by one okay so starting with reserve ratios we have two reserve ratios can somebody tell me what is the difference between crr and slr yes crr stand for cash reserve ratio every bank has to maintain a certain percentage of its exactly. total time and demand liability with rbi so the ratio yes. is called crr in the com comparison yes. of slr so SLR, here yes sir yes sir continue SLR, sir slr also include gold and uh, other government securities exactly that the bank have to keep it for themselves right is it uh, have to maintain with rbi again it is individual commercial banks that they have to maintain slr okay so <coughs> as sir rightly said crr is a certain minimum percentage that every bank has to maintain with rbi how you will calculate that percentage it should be the total a percentage should be calculated on the total of dime deposits and the demand deposits of any commercial bank okay so if you calculate your demand deposits with the time if you sum up with the demand deposits with the time deposit then the crr will be fixed by the rbi that percentages you have to maintain with rbi <coughs> okay just a minute okay now when i said crr so who will be deciding this rate this is not be constant it will be changing from one period to another period rbi okay yes rbi so why ah uh, sorry ma'am voice is breaking or is proper madam voice is breaking okay now it's clear yes ma'am yes ma'am how <coughs> it will be helpful no ma'am no ma'am it's not clear sir no not clear ma'am the voice not clear ma'am the voice not clear uh i hope it's clear now yes ma'am yes okay. ma'am see here why uh, this i told you quantitative uh, why rbi will be making use of this crr to have either to expansionary uh, policy of or injecting money in the economy or the contractionary basis okay so how it crr can help in expansionary and contractionary see expansionary here i mean injecting more money okay then contractionary it's uh, that means it's a withdrawal of money how it is possible with the crr so when the uh, when the rbi has to increase the money in the in the market it will reduce yes. the rate of interest of crr exactly. so that the fund yeah on in the uh, opposite way when uh, it has to suck the money from the market it will yes, increase sir, the crr right. and yeah exactly so suppose if the crr is 4% currently okay then uh, if the rbi wants to inject more money in the market so they will reduce this suppose 4% in the sense of your total demand deposits and uh, de uh, time deposits if you were saving with the rbi 2 lakh rupees okay suppose you have 5 lakh uh, rupees now uh, 50 lakhs rupees you have 
So out of 50 lakhs, generally, I'm giving you an example. If you had to save, uh, I mean, you have to deposit 2 lakhs with RBI uh, out of your uh, time deposits and the demand deposits of uh, 25 lakhs, okay, you will be left with 23 lakhs to be given out as a lending, okay. But suppose if this is being reduced to somewhere 2%, okay, maybe you will be start saving or start depositing only 1 lakh. So here money supply that is you bank can lend 24 lakhs to the general public. Okay. But suppose if the uh, RBI wants to withdraw contracts, okay, they don't want more money to be supplied in the market, they will increase this cash reserve ratio. So if you increase again for 5%, instead of 23, again, it will be reduced to 21 or 22 lakhs will be available for the general public for lending. Okay, that is how cash reserve ratio will help in the uh, measure, uh, tools of monetary policy to control the money supply. Then we have SLR. Okay, how, what is SLR? That you have to maintain certain reserves in the form of gold or in the it can be in the form of any government securities. Okay, so all these are like bank will give one rate of uh, SLR and you have to make the, you have to maintain the reserves okay for example if your slr is 25 percent now if the banks want if the rbi wants to inject more money in the economy it will reduce the slr same way like a crr so if it reduced to 20 percent so remaining five percent more money you will be having to lend in the market and there will be expansion of money supply okay but suppose if government wants to contract okay uh, the money supply in the market they will increase the rate suppose if it is from 25 to 30 percent then there will be a contraction of money in the market is that clear am i clear yes, yes ma'am okay then then we have open market operations what happens here in the open market operations there will be buying and selling of the Gold government ports. securities Yes, even this is also one of the control measure of money supply in the market. Okay, what have if the government has to expand, inject more money? What government can do? Sell, sell, sell bonds. Therefore, it will be increased or decreased. Or uh, sorry, buying and selling of government securities. If the go government will buy or sell, RBI. Government will sell. Right. I'll just see this is the market where buying and selling of government securities will take place. Now, suppose if the RBI wants to expand, that is, inject more money into the market, okay, or economy, uh, whether they buy or sell the securities. Sell the securities. Sell the securities. Buy the security. Yes, buy the securities. If the government buys, if the RBI buys more securities, they will be paying money to the uh, commercial banks. That is, uh, they'll be paying more money to the government and there'll be more money supply. Suppose if they have to contract, that is, they have to hold on money, I mean, uh, withdrawal of money from the economy, they will start selling. selling, selling. Right? When they start selling, we will be purchasing it. <coughs> Because we will not be having more uh, options of purchasing these government securities all the time. So what we, what we will do, we will start buying that at the time of RBI came up with the sales. So when selling happens, the government can have control over the money supply. When they start buying the government securities, then there will be more supply of money in the market. Okay? Yes. Then we have bank rate. Uh, so I'll just quickly go back. So we are done with quantitative measures, reserve ratio. We are done with CRR and SLR. Then open market operation we are done. Now policy rate. Okay. So there are different policies for uh, expansion and contraction of money supply. Four policies, bank rate, repo rate, reverse repo rate and uh, marginal facility. Okay. So now policy rate we'll discuss one by one first is bank rate what is bank rate here see it is the discounting rate okay it can be discounting rate or it can be 
rediscounting rate as well so any rate which is been discounting the securities of commercial banks then we call that in uh, that rate which will be charged the rate which will be charged for the commercial banks okay that we call it as a bank rate okay so why they will uh, why banks will discount it the bills of exchange they are in need of money yes whenever the banks commercial banks in, are in need of money and they will be having certain bills of exchange right that they would have been collected from their customers uh, for uh, making the deferred payment <clears throat> sorry okay see for example any businessman if they receive the promissory note so what they will do for i'll give you a, a simple example i have purchased some goods from you worth of rupees 50 uh, yeah 5 lakhs i'll take example of 5 lakhs i have taken the goods from you on credit basis of 5 lakh rupees but i will not make the cash payment instead i'll give you the promissory note stating that i will make you the payment after 3 months 90 days are allowed okay so after 3 months i will tell you i'll make the payment as a commercial bank will you keep this bill idle no what it will be like you are blocking your money okay now you can you can discount it with another commercial bank okay suppose they'll keep some uh, 5% of interest so instead of this 5 lakhs you will be getting 4 lakh 50000 okay if the 10% is your discounted okay 4 lakh 50 so what this other commercial bank can do they can rediscounting this bill with the rbi okay so here suppose rbi is also charging for rediscounting it to 10% more so how much it will be how much you will be receiving you will be receiving 3 lakhs 5000 yeah 4 lakh 5000 sorry 4 lakh 5000 minus 45000 10% so 4 lakh 5000 you will be getting it. but you need not have to wait for 3 months okay so at, this is the rate the RBI is charging you for rediscounting, or directly if you are going to RBI for discounting. So the whatever the rate they charge for you, we call it as a bank rate. Is that clear? Yes. So twenty twenty it was four point two five. I'll give you the current rates at the end of this uh, monetary policy. Okay, then repo rate. You all know better. What is repo rate? <coughs> repo rate. Anybody? Repo rate is the rate at which RBI okay. lends short-term money in the market. Short-term money, correct? Short-term money for say, for example, for seven days, or you may require it for fourteen days or twenty-eight uh, days. So you can have the if you are a commercial bank, you can have the small short-term. Whenever you are in supply of money or shortfall of money, then you can uh, get the money from the RBI. and that is for short term securities uh, i mean for short term period they will be providing you a loan okay and the collateral securities will be the short term securities the rate they will charge you uh, for this amount of money that rbi is lending you we call it as repo rate the same way here we have reverse repo rate what is reverse repo rate when rbi takes back the money from the market it is reverse repo rate exactly when rbi a uh, demands for the money okay so, uh, this is like for contracting money okay repo rate is when they want expansion they will offer the money they will lend the money for the uh, bankers commercial banks but suppose when they have to contract or have the control over the money supply in the market okay they will be releasing out the additional funds uh, they will be getting up the additional funds from the commercial banks okay then that is uh, at the rate at which they are doing this activity we call it as reverse repo rate then we have msf rate msf is nothing but marginal standing facility rate okay what this rate is see whenever there should be a uh, 
liquidity adjustment facility has to be done okay what is liquidity adjustment again the expansion or contraction this is the liquidity adjustment that should be done by the uh, reserve bank of india expansion or contraction so when this two decision has to be taken either one of this then they can go ahead with the msf rate can somebody tell me what is msf rate this is like overnight borrowing okay uh, maybe for one call money. day call two money. days 24 hours it is yeah, call, call money, money. Ah, correct one day exactly sir. yeah one day two days whenever the banker will make the call for it they have to make the payment this is only to have the liquidity adjustments if the banks are requirement of liquid um, liquid they can easily contact the rbi okay or the central bank and the, at the rate of which they help the commercial banks okay at a very short notice that we call it as msf rate okay this was about the quantitative measures is that clear any doubt in the quantitative measures madam what is the difference between the primary market and secondary market Sir, I told you, sir. Uh, sir, that is what ma money market. I told you that is primary market, okay, and uh, secondary market, okay. For example, there is one uh, company, ABC company, okay. For the first time, if the company issues the shares, if you purchase it directly from the company for the first time, then that is primary market. Okay, you have taken fifty shares. directly from the company your name is registered in the company but you don't want to hold these shares maybe the share you predicted that share prices will go down okay so what you will do you will sell this to a second party with the help of some broker bull bear stag or the brokers of the secondary market capital market so they will help you to sell it to some other person you sell for me okay so this is secondary market if you are buying it for the from already it is been purchased by some user second hand you are purchasing from somebody so that is secondary market that is capital market and this is money market clear sir yes ma'am ma'am uh, ma rbi yes, can ma also rbi can also have transaction in the secondary market rbi security sir but it's very rare governmental securities you can, can't find the trading of it private companies it's very natural rbi always will be the primary market for uh, commercial banks okay simply ma'am an ipo it is a primary market other than yes. ipo secondary market exactly sir okay i hope i made it clear all the quantitative measures yes ma'am okay yes, shall i complete qualitative just give me 5 more minutes yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so here i'll just quickly go to the slide quantitative measures credit rationing we have okay so it's like uh, controlling the amount of credit available i'll give you a very simple example sir for credit rationing suppose you have uh, you went for reliance small okay yeah ma'am is it breaking my voice is breaking no ma'am no ma'am no okay i'll give you a very simple example if you go to reliance digital okay and you want to buy one laptop that laptop is costing you rupees um 80000 and you don't have 80000 with you you took only 30000 and for remaining 50000 you are looking for the finance will they not provide you the finance <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. Will they not provide you the finance? Definitely, they will provide. provide. On what basis? <coughs> they want to provide you the finance, but what basis? On the basis of income. Sorry, on the basis of your income, and or have you all come across Our, credit rating? Repaying repay, repay, repay capacity. Credit or if you are having civil. Civil. Yes. they will check your civil score it should be more than 720 okay so suppose if it is 580 will they give you no ma no ma no 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 
that is what the credit rationing here having the control over the amount of credit okay so rbi will come up certain restrictions for providing the credit even as a point of view of a banker only i will ask you people if somebody applies for loan will you sanction the loan immediately no 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 oh, madam no. 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 you want to do the credit process we have to see the bill we will first check the credit worth in the paper over EMA income credit no EMA no yeah that is credit rationing there is certain rules and regulations for every kind of credit even from the bank or from any other uh, uh, industry or something okay so there will be some restrictions which is been uh, given by the rbi so rbi fixes the ceiling here maximum limit okay based on the score and all so that we call it as credit rationing okay then we have moral suasion okay so moral suasion here is uh, they will impose certain restrictions on commercial banks they will release some uh, rules and regulations that they that they want the commercial banks to follow okay so like uh, slr crr and all there are so many uh, rules and regulations that uh, they will be issuing for the commercial banks notices order will be issued for the uh, commercial banks that you have to contribute something for the economic interest of the country okay any idea uh, the best example is uh, demonetization you people have already experienced this uh, what happened during demonetization were you were you people not working for more than working hours you yes, were working sir. more than your working hours right why yes, what was said what what was what was uh, promised during demonetization get oh, back the old currency and raising the new currency sorry sir can you repeat the getting back the old currency from the public and issuing the new currency to them exactly but that we have a limit to uh, black but money it was said that uh, black money will be released out correct so it will be help help for the economy to develop that is why demonetization took place right so what do you people did did you follow all the commercial banks did not follow they were working more than their working hours for helping the people for uh, having the conversion of old currency to a new currency correct so that is moral suasion when something some restrictions or orders comes from the rbi for the commercial banks for the uh, economic interest of the country we call that as moral suasion okay then we have margin requirements okay any idea what is margin requirements Uh, some some bankers' point of view. If you have, sorry, uh, security is given a time at the time of loan. Yes, exactly. That is margin requirements. Correct. Will you? If I ask you now on the online platform, sir, now I am teaching you, or madam, I am teaching you. Can you please lend me some five lakh rupees as loan? Will that be enough? Mutual understanding is enough. No, no, ma'am. Right. I have to submit the loan application, the property uh, yeah. which I am purchasing. Suppose if it is a housing loan, then all khata should be proper. Okay, all these documents you will check, right? So why you will check all that? That is a necessity. That is the guidelines given by the RBI. Okay, and suppose property is worth of fifty lakhs, and I am demanding to give me a loan of eighty lakhs. Can you people approve the loan? No, 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 no. What is the margin? You can't give me fifty lakhs also, correct? I, How much you can sanction? Seventy-five percent of this. Forty-five lakhs. Forty-five lakhs. Based on my income, salary receipt, you may I can offer me forty lakhs or forty lakhs maximum. You can offer. How can you say that you can offer me only so much because margin is fixed by RBI? Okay. and the last one uh, no we have another two consumer credit okay this is similar way it is like for household purposes consumer credits and all you know even amazon is on 
sell the camel to provide the consumer credit. This is for the consumables. Okay, Bajaj uh, Finster, HDFC, and all. We can easily give the card number and we can get the uh, credit facility. Okay, and even for this, RBI has issued so many regulations that will be followed by the companies. Okay, and the last one we have is direct action. See, suppose if uh, commercial banks are not following the rules and regulations. Now, suppose if uh, now um, I can give you a best example. What happened with the uh, Vijay Malia? What did he do? Defaulter. In service. Default. Willful default. He just he didn't pay. Paid only half of the amount. Banks were realized. But half of the amount has not been realized. What Nirav Modi did, he also cheated. Okay, and there was one case for power, Punjab National Bank also. So all these, when whenever these banks are, why why it has been happened? Is it the uh, mistake of Vijay Malia or is it the mistake of banks that they are not being able bank, to bring bank, back their government? Yes, government, that, madam. Sorry. Is yeah. Yeah, in that case, banks uh, RBI can take the direct action, okay, for controlling credit, or they can impose the penalty or fines of the banks on uh, if they don't follow the RBI prescribed rules. Okay, this is how government can uh, RBI can have a control on the money supply. Okay, so that is why all the commercial banks will follow rules and regulation. Otherwise, there is an authority who can have the who can take some action on the banks. Okay, or any other financial institution. Am I clear? I hope I am clear. I made it clear. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any doubt in this? Uh, both quantitative and qualitative. No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma no, ma clear. Thank you so much for giving me a little extra time. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, ma'am. Madam, madam, what is market? Ma'am, your voice is breaking. Madam, what is market stabilization scheme? Market stabilization scheme, sir. Yes. Sir, when they have to uh, bring the stability in the foreign currency, okay, that is market stability rate. Uh, they'll be having RBI will be issuing. Uh, uh, see, yeah, I have muted. Sir, market stabilization is it is uh, particular for uh, foreign currency, sir. Uh, they will give out the exchange rate. Okay. See, suppose uh, I have to exchange my uh, currency. Okay. At what rate I will be exchanging, sir? If I have a dollars, I have to change the currency in uh, in in Indian rupees. What rate I will follow, sir? Can you generally uh, give me one dollar forty rupees now? Yes. No, can you hear me, sir? Yes. Yes. Uh, can I accept forty rupees for one dollar if you pay me now? No, ma'am. What I will demand? Market rate. Market rate, right, sir? That is being decided by RBI based on the demand for the currency in the market. So that is market stabilization rate. It is also known as exchange rate. Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Okay. Would you please would you please repeat was again green revolution? Sorry, sir. Would you please uh, tell again green revolution? The green revolution. Hello. Can you hear me? Madam, your sound is breaking. Just a bit. It's okay. Can you hear me, sir, now? Yes. The green. Hello. Started like uh, during the time of food shortage, okay, where uh, various farm, uh, different farmers, no, they were losing their crops. They started losing their crops because of heavy rains, 
no proper irrigation facility and all they started losing the crops and uh, the supply was not appropriate appropriate to meet the demand of the people of the economy that's why they came up with the green revolution they bought the technology into the farming okay that is they started using pesticides so that uh, these insects will not eat off the yield and they will not destroy your grain and uh, so many uh, chemicals you can use for growing more growing faster okay so all these steps they took for uh, development in the agriculture field that's we call it as a green revolution is that clear sir clear clear okay thank you all have a good day uh, ma'am ma one, one question please yes sir manufacturing and services medium Sorry? the difference between uh, repo rate and reverse repo rate is fixed by rbi the re uh, repo rate is the rate which rbi charges for lending loans to you no the dif uh, difference that uh, yeah, you yeah. said in one slide that 1% Ah, uh, this one, sir. Uh, no, the difference between uh, repo rate and reverse repo rate. Huh? Does it change or um, it is fixed for some time or every time? Uh, I didn't get you, sir. Can you please repeat? Oh, the reverse uh, repo. It's fixed with the RPI. Yeah, yeah. Sir, it will uh, be fixed like the repo rate minus one. Uh, it is, is always for, uh, it is always one uh, one percent only. Uh, yes, sir. Like the formula we follow, but reverse repo rate cannot be constant. I'll share the rates tomorrow. Uh, I mean the next session. Okay. okay. Capital, Thank you. How much capital will come under medium ma'am in MSME? Yes. Sorry. How much capital that is in manufacturing and services sector will come under medium? Uh, that one you want to share above 50 lakhs i'll just share sir just above above 50 crores above 50 crores 50 crores yes yes chapter 7 no yes. services and sure sir i'll share you can take the note take a screenshot It's not in this book. I think sixth chapter. Sixth one. This one, no, sir? Yeah. Okay. Done. Okay. Thank Is it done? Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you.